Welcome to the University of Life Writing Center. Um, we're touching on a few chapters of the art and craft of writing. Right now we're going to do chapter six. And chapter six is the first of three where we're talking about uh, rhetoric. And in case you didn't know, rhetoric is basically the science of communication. They used to say of speaking, but it applies to writing as well. And it originated back in Athens, and they'd have the Senate, and the citizens would take turns going there and debating. And they figured if you could nail these three elements of your delivery, of your presentation, then it's a good presentation, and it will probably be at least more successful. So that's what they are, logos, pathos, and ethos. Anyway, logos. Um, it sounds like logic, right? And that's pretty much what it means. Does it make sense? All right, your ideas make sense. So here are a few points you need to understand to make sure you have good logos. By the way, don't say things like, if you're doing a report on some article, don't say, the article had logos. Well, of, of course it had logos or pathos or ethos, right? But is it what, what's the quality of it, right? So be more specific, like it had good logos, it had clear or cogent or, or whatever you want to say about it. Okay, so the question to ask about your logos is, are my ideas clear, sound, and supported? So first thing you need to understand is an argument. An argument uh, goes like this. It has three, three parts. Um, the first one, and you don't always have to mention all three parts, but you need to consider and make sure that you have a solid argument. First one is your claim. What is it that you're asserting? What are you saying, this is so? Turns out that technically, everything you say, except for two things, are claims. Everything you say, like what I just said, that's a claim. See, I just made another claim, and another one, and so, so on. And I'll continue to making claims, like that, um, until I ask a question, don't you think? Okay, now when I ask a question, it's not a claim, it's asking something, it's requesting information. And the other one is a, is a command, saying, pay attention. See, that's not claiming something is, it's telling you, telling, giving you directions. So, claims can be, let me give you an example here from the book. Emotional abuse and neglect of children can be equally or more devastating than physical abuse. Okay, you just said something is so. Here's another one. New hybrid engines achieve efficiency ratings of up to 60 miles per gallon. All right, there's a claim. 60 miles per gallon. Awesome, right? Well, it's maybe it was true at one point, but it's not true anymore, is it? Some engines get 100 miles per gallon. And there's rumors, of course, of even better. And why aren't they on the market? I don't know. Maybe you should write a paper about that. Um, but there's a claim. So once you have a claim, you need to make sure that it's um, believable, you know, that people believe it. Yeah. Hopefully it's a true claim. And to make sure people believe it, what you do is you support that claim. And there are different ways you can support it. You can, you can give a, a fact, a quote, a, uh, a statistic, like, like quote General Motors and say, and they did these studies and it gets 60 miles per gallon. Okay, so now you just quoted some expert who actually measured it, and that's, that's like supporting it. And just because someone gives evidence and statistics, you know, of course, doesn't make it true, right? You need to evaluate that, like everything about it. How, where did it come from? Was it from a reliable source? How recent is it? Um, the, did the author of that statistic have conflicting, you know, interests? Are they, is their stock going to go up if, if we believe them and buy, buy their stock and, and all? Testimonial evidence. You can, you can uh, have people quotes, you know, some experts. Some Albert Einstein said this. Oh, well, it must be true then because he's kind of a smart guy. Um, Bruce Lee said this. Oh, it must be true because he'll punch your face out if otherwise, right? Um, George Michael must, you know, said this. Oh, it must be true because he's from... Hollywood is famous, right? Um, so be careful, you know, evaluate your sources they come from. Anecdotal evidence. Anecdotal evidence, an anecdote is a story. So telling an example, describing an example. And anecdotal evidence has good parts and bad parts. Anecdotal is really great because it gives this illustration where people can relate to it and they can picture it in their minds and they're like, oh, that makes sense. And it might be great for helping people to say, I get it. But it's often very weak because just because something happened once doesn't mean it will happen again. Also, just because something happened once 
you might attribute a cause, like this happened because of that, a causal factor, and maybe that's not why it happened. Maybe there are all these other causal factors involved. So don't rely on anecdotal evidence to prove things necessary, but use them to um, illustrate. And if you're worried about your audience saying, oh, that's anecdotal, I don't trust that, then just point out and say, this is just to illustrate. And then give some statistical or testimonial from trustworthy people to prove your point. Explanatory evidence is also great where you just say the earth rotates around the sun, right? And just kind of explain it and then they look around and say, oh yeah, that does make sense. I get it. And that's great. Um, whenever you make a claim, you need to decide whether or not you need to support it and how much you need to support it. If you make a claim that your audience already accepts, maybe you don't need to support it. But maybe you do need to support it to make them care about it more. So as they're reading your paper, you're like, oh yeah, this matters, right? Get them invested in your paper and, and prepare them for whatever is coming next. Um, and then on to the third part of an argument, the warrant. So you have a claim, you're saying this is so. And you have your evidence, your support, which is saying, see, believe me. And the warrant is often omitted and often not necessary, but sometimes it's really important. And you should at least be aware, generally, of what it is. A warrant is like the bridge between the claim and the evidence. It shows the connection and says, see, this is why this claim proves my claim, or this support proves my claim. For example, um, got a couple in here. Baby boys weigh more than girls because, according to statistics from General Hospital, Okay, so there's your claim and your support, right? Baby boys weigh way more, there's your claim. According to stats from General Hospital, even though maybe you should have given us the stats to be even more persuasive. Okay, there's your support, your evidence. And what's the warrant? The warrant is saying, and if it comes from General Hospital, it's trustworthy, right? We can believe that. So, so there's your warrant in that case. Let me tell you the three types of warrants. Motivational, authority, and substantive. Motivational is like appeals to your reader's values. Here's a great one. Universal health care is a right, not a privilege, because no one should have to suffer because they can't afford health care. And government-sponsored health care prevents such suffering. Awesome, right? Okay, if you're a Democrat, you're like, or a traditional Democrat, you're like, that's right, we should help everybody. If you're a Republican, though, maybe that didn't appeal to your values, did it? Maybe you're like, no, People should help them, yes, but it shouldn't be the government or, or something like that. Um, so motivational, you know, make sure and check out, make sure they apply to your audience. It's going to work for them. The second type, authority, appeals to the credibility of your source. Like that example I just gave about General Hospital, which was the soap opera, right? So not great, not really great example of a trustworthy authority. Um, George Michael, the other example I mentioned, not the greatest. I mean. If he's talking about his music, great, here's the authority. If he's talking about politics, um, if you're from Hollywood, you probably agree with him. And if not, you probably don't. Um, the third, substantive. This is the one where you reason it out. It just makes sense. You know, you kind of explain it. Here's an example of that one. Boys are more prone to violence than girls, just like gorillas. And since humans and gorillas are very similar genetically, the comparison fits. That kind of makes sense. I mean, if you went into more details like testosterone and how that makes people aggressive, that would be a little better support for that, wouldn't it? But that's the basic idea. Sometimes you can have, your warrant can be implied, like you can just trust people or you can get it. But sometimes, you know, if they're not really believing your support, your evidence, maybe you should actually spill it out. So, all right, so there's, there's what a claim is made of, and that's what I'm going to talk about for Logos. And you can go to this web page and find more information and some examples and exercises, and also in this book, The Art and Craft of Writing.